What's up everybody, Brett here and I'm back today playing some more Battle Brothers on the Warriors of the North DLC. Guys, we're going into the Stone Pillars to take on the Kraken. Before we get started, let me go ahead and just show you the build and what I'm working with right now. And this is based a lot on the success that I had the last time I fought the Kraken. And yeah guys, wish me luck. I'm already a little bit stressed out, but I, I think we've got this. So... You'll notice, first off, no one's wearing a shield. And we'll get into why that is, I think, a bit more in the battle. But basically, we're going to get grabbed by tentacles. And shields will not protect us. We need as much fatigue as we can get. That's basically why. So, offhand free, we'll deal more damage with our one-handed weapons. We've got acid flasks already in our offhands for whenever we get close enough to the Kraken to throw it. We've got our three strongest two-handed dealers. All of them are in here. We've got Kata, Ragnar, and Leisure Side in the back line with these bill hooks, with their crossbows, and with the exquisite pole blade ready to do some damage. You cannot get within eating range of the Kraken. He, he one-shots you. So, once again, we'll get more to that as we get into the battle. We're doing a very melee-centric build because what we need in this battle to survive it is really high melee skill, which made me really want to bring in John. I'm just sort of doubting whether or not he survives this battle. He might be better in here than perhaps Hans. Even Lancel's kind of low. Hmm. There might still be a few last minute adjustments to make. We could always... Man, he's got Nimble. Overwhelm. He might just straight up be better than Hans in this in this build. And you know, so guys, if we fail on our first attempt, we'll try again. You know, I've got no time limit on this. I'm in no rush. We're here to learn and to try and do it correctly. It's a tough battle. I don't care how strong your brothers are. Um, this is one of those battles that's a grind every single time. And you know. It's cool to be able to say we won this fight because of, you know, so-and-so reason. But it's not always that simple, especially in this battle. So, we have the opportunity to now distribute his arms and armor. And this thing only has minus two vision. It's not bad if you have an eagle eye crossbowman. Um, but we can definitely... Who's got the best fatigue of the bunch? Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Give him like some super heavy armor. And this helmet is a 331. Someone's got to be wearing that. Let's just give it to Behemoth. It's got to be better than this. 20, 16. Yeah, it just sure is. Okay. Minor adjustment here right at the end. Let's go ahead and save the game just to make sure I don't ever have to make that adjustment again. Because I already know uh, the odds of us succeeding on our first try are pretty low. So, everyone stripped down. No extra stuff in the inventory that could weigh us down. We've got acid flasks. We've got five of them. We're lucky enough to kill enough linworms to get that. I'll tell you why that's important as we get into this. And yeah, uh, every dog we have available is currently equipped to someone. Dogs can become very useful in this battle. We don't have a ton of dogs, surprisingly. Yeah, and I think I made some last minute adjustments, so we're missing a dog or two. Yep, and Hans was supposed to be in, so his dog is out switch that up and there we go yeah i made a few last minute adjustments so this is this is fine one more quick save <laughs> let's uh let's do it right and here we go so there's going to be some reading i'm going to go ahead and do that the first time but on successive attempts if we fail the first time we are going to not read so don't worry about that but anyway guys let's get in there and hope for some decent land position Fighting in the swamp can be tricky. With all the time spent there, you thought this place an increasingly familiar mire, but the swamp suddenly feels strange and foreign, like walking into an old bedroom, only to know something has been moved around. You find the woman standing at a distance, a formation of her helpers behind her. They're all wearing cloaks made of unholed hides. They're crouching before bulbs of green lights, cupping them in their hands, and you can see slivers of grins brokered in each viridian sheen. Rhines of lips hissing softly in fading sanity. The woman's books and tomes and papers are littered all around. A fog lingers. 
and it has brought with it a horrible stench. You ask where your money is. The woman grins and her eyes are jaundiced, and her lips parched and splintered and mushroom bits are smattered across her cheeks. The sellsword wants his crowns. There is nothing here but escape. Escape from everything, everywhere. What's going on here? Oh my god. Look at that background. You watch as one of the helpers suddenly lifts into the air, and in the green light you see the slick tentacle drag him backward, and it seems as though the earth itself opens up, and a thousand wet boughs and branches crinkle and drip, and rows upon rows of fangs bristle, clattering against one another as though shouldering for a slice. And the helper is thrown into its maw, and the gums twist, and he is disrobed and defleshed and delimbed and destroyed. The woman chomps on another mushroom, and then her hands caress bulbs of green, and you can see the tentacles slithering beneath each. Join us, sellsword. Let the beast of beasts have its feast. Hail to the gnaw. We're going to fight the kraken in the swamp. Cross your fingers, we get on some solid land. That is everything in this battle. Okay. We can work with this. We can work with this. We've only got, looks like, three brothers who are not currently on land. We need to get them to, to the muddy earth and the plashy grass. If we can get these three here, we're good to go. Alright, so there are nine enemies on the field. Eight of them are tentacles. Or earlicks. Probably something like swamp lights or something like that, roughly translated. We need to kill this one. It's standing exactly where I want to be. They have no zone of control, you'll notice. So we can shoot. But they will be grabbing us. So the Kraken is a pretty unique enemy in this game in that we really have to wade through all of these tentacles. Man, these misses are brutal. Absolutely brutal. Oh my god. Okay, this is kind of bad. We have to kill a ton of tentacles before we are able... Damn. Before we're able to... I know, I keep losing my train of thought, guys. Before we're able to get to the main body itself. We're going to have to hack these things down for like 30 minutes is what it will feel like and probably what it will be. All right, there's one down. Only one. And we probably got about another 50 of those to go, if I'm being honest. I'm trying to get our brothers here. Onto this earth. We can attempt to go first, but it's all about conserving our fatigue at this point. First things first, let's get on dry land. If we see an opportunity to actually get a kill on one of these things before they get a chance to wrap us up, that's great. But what happens is they wrap us up, and then they try and pull us closer to the mouth. And the best way to stop it is just like what you do in you know, any fights versus Orc Shaman. You try and stay close to your brothers, and you help each other out. But this is kind of rough. I knew Behemoth stepping here would be would be kind of bad. This is not good. Okay. Every time it takes two tries to do that, we're kind of getting screwed. We'll pass. Priority is always to free a brother. We don't have to make any moves until we know that we've accomplished that task. And when we free them, we, we hurt the tentacle monster. We really got to pull Gimli in here. This is bad. Very, very bad. So he could try and break himself free. And then get back to the rest of the group. But look how he's separated now. But at least we can see the beasts of beasts. And his 
undoubtedly enormous HP pool. Let's drop a Warhound. I do like being able to cause bleeding on those. Hmm. Not too hot. I really don't like how Behemoth's gotten separated. I'm actually going to move Svarog down. Man, that's a really bad, really bad miss. The idea basically is for us to be standing on the high ground and for them to be in the swamp so we have a better chance of hitting them. Uh, but they really went into some rough spots for us at the beginning. And he's spawning more Illix to deal with the ones. You know what, let's use Adrenaline and try and kill this guy. So that way we can perhaps step where we want to. I could see Adrenaline being kind of a useful tool here. Giving us priority over these things. It should be dead. And I was hoping to get that kill as as well. We'll wait. And pardon me guys if the commentary is a little weak. I'm pretty hyper focused. Okay. Okay. Gotta free him. That's first priority every time. And getting that kill would have been huge for us. We can't move. Oh no. And now we're stuck in the swamp. And what's really bad is if you can't even escape whenever they pull you like this. We no longer have vision of the Kraken. He's going to get pulled again. No doubt very close. We've got to get him back. See how much we've hurt him so far? Not very much. And he has a huge amount of armor. And another main thing to keep in mind is that when we're in the swamp, our chance, our melee attack goes down, and that directly is what affects our ability to get these things off of us. Yeah, I can already tell this run has gone south. We weren't able to get together well enough to protect ourselves. So someone like Behemoth right now is dead. Behemoth's going to get pulled to the mouth and he's going to get eaten. And as soon as we kill it, there it goes. Another one spawns. We need to wait and see how we need to move. That's bad. And every time you miss, it just feels so bad. Not 100% terrible for a first attempt, but the thing is... It's just such a long kind of demoralizing fight. And, you know, they 
they're just going to keep grabbing the same ones. The AI is really good at targeting. We can use this. I think it prevents us from being grabbed, but I don't know if everyone here has Indomitable. Yeah, he's Fritz is pretty much dead now. This fight feels to me like it's missing a mechanic. Or like your brother should be able to try and free themselves that before they get moved. That's honestly what sucks the most about it. Is that they get brought to the mouth on the same turn that they get grabbed. So it's not all over yet, but if Sir Lancel goes one step closer to the Kraken, he just gets 100% eaten. And there's really, there's not even anywhere for him to go. They're just going to completely wrap him up. And you'll see we've done enough damage now. I think that the, the tentacles have changed. We're kind of like in stage two of this fight. The tentacles have opened up. They're going to actually start doing damage now. And Fritz might just straight up be dead. They might just bring Fritz here and then he's, he's done. Wow. Earl. You're brave, Earl. Man, didn't even get to get eaten by the Kraken. But yeah, they're all dead. Everyone here is dead. We can't bring, we can't consolidate well enough. What you have to be able to do is to sit in a tight little ball and every single turn you basically have to get lucky in being able to free your brothers. And if you can't do that, you're, you're dead. And we weren't able to make that little ball right at the start. So I don't know how much more value there is in continuing this particular attempt uh, other than maybe just so you guys could see what it looks like if you haven't already when a Kraken gets to eat the hell out of somebody it's pretty brutal and he's dead he doesn't have the fatigue to get out of there and he can't he like barely can even move so Fritz is super dead See what happens. We can't drop our last dogs. Just trying to think right now, is there a way we could change up our starting formation to make it better for balling up? And I think the answer for that is not really. I'm surprised the Kraken Head didn't eat him. Is he like one step? I guess he maybe is one hex away. I mean, this fight is rough, guys. It's not so much like skill as RNG. Which for me is always like a feel-bad mechanic. Even down to how many of our first attacks we missed. And are kind of still missing. Unless they change this fight without me knowing... I'm pretty sure I, I know like what's up. Do we not have the fatigue? Wow, we can't even shoot twice. Like, see how everyone here is kind of safe? As you start to kill them, they have to kind of trickle in. And once they're trickling in, it's... We're getting lucky and we keep getting these like freeing moments. Uh, once they start trickling in, they become a lot more manageable. But unfortunately we just we got separated too early in the in like the process. 
We needed them to be coming in like one, two, you know, at a time. I can't believe they're still alive down here. It'd be great if we could get to them. But yeah, guys, I'm going to go ahead and, and like stop this run. I just think there's no way we're going to do it. I think it was a good kind of like opener. Just to kind of get you guys familiar with the mechanics. But it's a grind. If we win, it'll be like a 40 minute battle. I didn't hate our starting position either. I thought we were in a good little spot. Okay, this is... This is garbage. This is not... This is not good. This is very much not good. It doesn't matter so much for our ranged guys. But the swamp, man, if we just, the one perk that makes this fight much, much easier is the one that gives you, man, I'm, I'm trying to think of what it is, Pathfinder? Yeah, we're screwed. <laughs> we're super screwed. We missed all of our first attacks, which basically means that on the next round, it's all about snowballing. We're trying to, to, to kill them so that their attacks on us, their attempts to drag us away are staggered. Only a few of them can get to us at a time. Getting some early dogs might help. And what I was saying about Pathfinder before I interrupted the heck out of myself is that it takes away the malice, the penalty of standing in the swamp. What you see here is mainly a reduction in melee skill, which makes it, of course, harder for us to break free because it's all based on melee skill. Melee skill and fatigue are the two main factors in this battle. So here we go. We start getting pulled. I don't hate this position here. But if we could just get on some dry land, if you really don't feel like, you know, starting and stopping and starting and stopping a hundred times to do this battle, just re-roll the, the land. Just like take the fight over and over again until you get the, the land mass that you need. It's a little lame to do that, but I mean, do what you gotta do. Sometimes your actual real life time is just more important. And there's something even to be said for not attacking these guys on the opening turn. There we go, Gimli again. And because it took him two turns to get out. Like he's basically, they're basically dead. You have to stop them from doing this right at the beginning. I would say essentially if someone gets pulled on the first turn of doing this then you might you might as well just like restart we can play it out a little bit but our position is bad half in the water half out and we've already got two brothers pulled back from a position that there's no way uh, we can bring them back we could have brought Isaac perhaps to here ish but then he's still separated and that completely leaves Gimli by himself and I think in a situation like that especially when you're near the end of the fight You'd rather have two brothers next to each other to help out in case one of them misses a roll. So once again, I think we're just, we're honestly just going to reload it. Let's try again. Like I said, guys, snowball effect, man. See, in this type of this type of land, 
mass or lack thereof without Pathfinder, like you might as well reload. Your odds of saving your brothers are pretty damn low. But I think we need to change our starting formation. We need to put Gimli here. His position is the worst. Wow, and they, they were, he was so far out, they were able to grab him on the first turn. I don't think I've ever seen them do that. Alright, let's go for one that we can focus fire. And we don't want to use melee weapons if we don't have to there. Everyone who's not currently engaged in some way needs to just wait. Step in here, drop a dog. We'll try and ball up a little bit. Perfect. Okay, we had to get him out of there. And this will put him on high ground as well, and it'll let us get a dog out. Good job, Brant. So, as you can see, guys, I don't give up right at the start. Uh, but I'm, I'm very realistic about my odds once certain events take place. So I'm not telling you to, to kind of get pessimistic about this type of start. But I'm just telling you from my experience, if you just don't have Pathfinder and you try and take this fight and they start you off in the swamp, expect to have a, a bad time. Honestly, I thought we were kind of blessed when I saw our first starting position. We just couldn't consolidate fast enough. They were on us. They wrapped us up. We couldn't free ourselves. We missed a few too many attacks. And then that was kind of it. We want as many brothers touching other brothers as possible, as weird as that is to say. We want as many connecting points so that we can unwrap people. And then we also need to start killing them. But killing them comes from just as much from cutting them off of you as it does from attacking them. You almost don't need to attack them at all. If you just can consistently get them off of you, you'll kill them. And one thing we really don't want is for the dogs to move forward. Okay. Let's actually pull this down so you guys can see our chances of breaking them free. I know you can still kind of see it, but not very well. Come on. That was really, really bad. This is also bad. And also part of the reason why we're not bringing a ton of non-melee-centric characters or brothers. Because we need them to be able to consistently either cut themselves out or cut others I was hoping they would bring him there at least that's not terrible we still have a chance to free our boy okay I like putting some damage on that one because we do want them to start coming in slow and steady to stagger their advance. Now if I come here I only have one point of contact with Sir Modun. I want at least two. Killing this one would have been great and killing this one would have been awesome as well. But yeah, when we try again, if this doesn't work, we're definitely going to pull Gimli down. There's no reason we should be spending our first turn trying to, you know, stay close. We shouldn't have to move at all right at the start. Oh man, a dog getting that kill would have been sweet. Alright. 
right, if they don't go on Isaac, Isaac could free Gimli. There's no way they don't go on Isaac. God, they went on every melee bro with high melee attack. So if we don't land these, we're just like screwed. Okay. Yep, that's pretty bad, guys. That's really bad. That's, yep, that's that's pretty much GG right there. Whenever you miss that many, like, you're just, you're done. We missed way too many. We're still sort of close to each other, which is giving me some kind of hope. But it's not a lot of hope. Yeah, let's get back. Any chance you have to step back, you should definitely take it. Let's get down more dogs. Kind of want them on the outskirts, that way they're not blocking us from freeing each other. Keep on trying. I mean, another element that could be interesting to add to this, to incentivize me to at least keep my shields, is making it be there like a chance for them to grab me instead of just an absolute certainty. There's a lot of little tweaks they could make to this fight to make it more bearable. Granted, it does make it easier. I mean, if you just want to make it super hard, that's definitely what they've done. So in my most successful run, what I basically did was after kind of snowballing the first two turns and kind of being on dry land, I started moving backwards. For me, that was the key. It was straight up walking as far backwards as I could and then by the time we, I realized that they were coming in much slower and it was like a whole different stage of the, of the fight. Damn, that was, that was not good. It was a whole different stage of the fight and I could start moving forward at my own pace. We got to free him so that he can free him. I'm going to step forward here. Oh, no. Get out of there, Lancel. If you could just do it on the first try, man, you'd have been safe. Yeah, and Sir Muldoon is basically screwed. And now, like I said, he's better off just hanging out near Lancel, and maybe they can save each other at some point. God. I'd say it's a rough fight, but it's not even really a fight. It's just one of those specialized boss battles in the game that makes you ask yourself, like, shouldn't I really have brought Pathfinder on all of my brothers all the time? Like every every build, but that's just not the case. There are some enemies in the game where certain perks are going to be great and certain others are useless, right? In my last playthrough, I used Executioner and Crippling Strikes on every brother, which against living forces, and I also used Fearsome, which against the living was amazing. I wrecked every single living army I came across. If they could run, if they could be injured, you know, I crushed them. But... You know, when you go to fight the Black Monolith fight, where everything is immune to that type of, you know, resolve check, and where nothing can be injured, 
you find all of a sudden that three of your perks on every single one of your brothers are essentially useless. And in that same train of thought, I would say that, you know, Pathfinder is never actually useless. But it's definitely more pertinent in some fights than others. Yeah, there's there's nothing we can do. This is feeling like a another bad run, guys. And there he goes. He's going to get brought to the mouth, and he can step out. Thankfully, there's some high ground around him, which generally means that we'll have the fatigue necessary to cut ourselves out, step away. But if ever we miss two times in a row, he's just dead. Drop a dog. Oh, that's Battle Brother. No, Battle Brother, what are you doing? Okay, Battle Brother, that was not the play, my friend. I was hoping he'd go up here. That was a bad spot to drop Warrior. We should have dropped him here. And then maybe we could have consolidated Thane with the other guys. Like I said, though, I'm not sure how much it matters, y'all. This is feeling like a pretty... Messed up run. Yeah, Battle Brother just got consumed. So what I may do is something very similar to what I did last time. Where I just do this a bunch on my own. Because this could take several attempts. And then whenever I think I've got a winning run going, I'll just bring you guys in on it. And the reasoning for that is I just can't. Like, due to real-life time constraints, I just can't play this game all day long to try and grind this one fight. And as much as I want to show you guys start to finish, like, an epic battle, I was able to do it on the last playthrough, but it took me about 15 tries, and, you know, the sooner you realize that a battle's gone south, the sooner you can restart and try again. But even my successful battle, and then we're going to lose Warrior, uh, you know, Missing the first 10 minutes of the battle, it was still like a 45 minute battle. Yeah, and things just aren't going our way. And this time we haven't even, I mean, we haven't killed enough of them to even cause them to open up yet. Yeah, and now we don't even have the fatigue we need to jump away from the mouth. Very bad. So we're going to we're going to restart again. One more time and we're going to do our best. Hold on, hold on. We're gonna fall back because I forgot to place uh forgot to place Gimli here. It's weird that he sticks out so far when it looks like he doesn't, but it's one of those one of those Battle Brothers things. Alright, let's get in there. Gimme some dry land. Okay, almost. See how they form up around us. That'll really dictate whether or not we're able to ball up. We want to get Jotnar here or here. Mudun would be good here. Whatever we got to do, we just need to maintain points of contact. That sucks. Was hoping you wouldn't take that spot from us. Alright, dog on the outside. Step in here, drop a dog. Doesn't hurt to put a little damage on them. We need to we need to kill some of them 
so that we can, like I said before, stagger them. We want to stagger their advance as much as we can. Man, we can't get in there. Hmm. Step in here. We're just trying to make room. This is a fine spot for him. Two points of contact. Looking good. We'll drop a dog from some of the brothers that we can. One more step. If we can clear this guy out of our back line, we might be able to back up. Really wish they would wrap up our back line instead of all of our front liners. It's almost like they're the AI is just trying to take out everyone who has the highest melee skill. Which for me is like a little too smart. It's a tentacle beast, it probably should just grab at random. Wait. I knew we still had Sfarog to try and free our boy here. So Behemoth is out. Forty-six versus forty-six. Man, them being in the swamp doesn't do anything at all negative for them. They get no defensive malice at all. Do we even get a chance to free him? Like, that's pretty crappy. Pretty sure Fritz... Is Fritz just really that slow? And just like that, the turn goes south. We just weren't able to consolidate fast enough. And if I sound a little discouraged, I guess I am. I just understand like the time it's going to take to get this fight done. And for me, these types of fights, very similar to the Alps, or any time you fight the Goblin Shaman, I think, I think the guys who make this game are really good at it. Uh, I think that should go without saying. But I think it takes them a little bit of time to reevaluate stuff like this. They've changed the Alps so many times. And it's not because it's you know it's a great fight. It's because they recognize that they made an extremely tedious and dangerous fight for no reason. And that's exactly what the Kraken fight is. It's an incredibly tedious fight. It's like playing whack-a-mole. And what skill there is to it... You know, can be figured out relatively quickly. Okay. Man, the fact that it takes like our... We can't even... Uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, that's that's the fight, guys. I don't even know if I want to try it one more time. It's it's just a huge time sink. Because even, let's say, I get a, a, a good run going. 
in in the next attempt. It'll take it'll make this a video like an hour and a half long at least at least. So I'm just not sure that's something I want to do. And I hate that this video kind of feels like it has like a negative tinge to it, but this is not my favorite fight in the game. But when you finish it, I mean, you feel like a freaking badass hero. But right now, I'm just a dude being dragged through the swamp repeatedly by tentacles uh, with very little recourse to stop it unless I get lucky at the beginning of the fight. So we got our first kill, our first tentacle kill, or second, whichever. But we're kind of, we're very split up now, which to me is just like doom. You, you may as well restart. Our brothers are not having the best time in the swamp. Interesting to see them bypass John. Just as I say that. <laughs> they crap, John. Ugh. So we're on the right path, y'all. I mean, removing the shields I think is is necessary for fatigue purposes. Bringing the dogs can help you to make it through the first few rounds to where you can start to snowball getting kills. Uh, the acid is going to be extremely useful when we finally do make it to them to the Kraken head and we start tearing off the huge amount of armor that this thing has. I think I almost ran out of ammunition last time trying to, to shoot that thing and, and kill it from a distance. Because all of my, you know, pole hander users had either died or, you know, there was no way to get close to him. It's a tricky fight. You can do everything right and at the very end lose it. And even now, I guess we're not doing too terribly. Let's go ahead and throw this on him. So now his his armor starts to corrode over several turns. I don't think they stack. I mean, that could be an interesting thing to test right now. Might as well do a little testing while we're uh, certain of our demise. Uh, we can't drop a dog. Can't get on the high ground. Battle Brother gets eaten by the jaws of death. And we've done almost no damage whatsoever. To the Kraken himself. Uh, we have taken out some of his head armor. Which I think is the only armor that matters. I don't remember. I feel like a Linworm would be a natural predator to these things. Just a crap ton of dogs. Oh, dogs. Man, my brain. A crap ton of like giant dragons. Like finding their way into the swamps and just like feasting on these tentacles. I don't know if I'd want to live in a world where these things exist. I'd have to level every swamp. Give them nowhere to hide. But there's a cool like lore to them. It's kind of like that they... They were sea creatures that... You know, maybe the waters receded or whatever. And they got stranded... They got stranded on, on land and ended up kind of making their way to the swamps. It's almost good for us that it's so crowded right now around his mouth. I don't quite understand why they're pulling us in this weird backwards fashion, but I'm grateful.
Okay. Alright, that's another kill. But there's a tree dividing us. Don't want to drop another dog right now. I feel like it'll just die. Alright, we gotta break free and we gotta move away. And we couldn't. So down he goes. Just like that. So, alright guys. I mean, clearly I'm not going to be naming today's episode Epic, Massive, Kraken, Battle of Doom or something like that. Uh, but I hope this was a good kind of introduction to the fight. And what I believe are the strats to try and take it down. And believe me, when you do this on your own and you, you get to, to take this fight, you'll know whether or not you're doing it right. Within like the first three turns. If the first three turns go poorly, just restart. Don't waste your time like I'm doing now for the sake of education and entertainment. I feel like I'm stabbing myself in a part of my body with like a spork. Continuing a fight that I know I'm losing and where I've already lost a brother. Yeah. So what are the, you know, just quickly, what are like the keys to victory maybe? Something we could talk about. Oh, that actually splashed on the brand. <laughs> uh, well, I think the keys to victory are to start on solid ground and stay there. In the first turn, no one should be pulled forward in any way. If you can prevent that and have yourself on solid footing in the first turn, you've got a, a pretty decent shot at moving forward and just turtle like you've never turtled before think you sometimes you have to think a little more critically about who unwraps who because you could very easily find yourself um, using the wrong person to unwrap another person and then when you've done that you've made it so that one person inevitably gets pulled forward But yeah, make it past those first couple turns. That's my advice. You're welcome to employ my strategy or you know, maybe there are other YouTubers out there who know different strats that I'm not privy to. Uh, but these are the ones I came up with the last time I faced the Kraken. They serve me well. Um, I refine them over the course of many battles. And I'm making the best with the team that I have is kind of the thing. There might be better weapons that we could use. I mean, you could, like, theoretically, you could just give everybody really small swords. Because you're not going to win this through damaging it with your front line. But because we have the different perks that give, uh, that give fatigue reduction to the, uh, the particular weapons that our brothers are using is kind of why I've opted to, to keep them. But I think if you really wanted to to min-max it, those goblin swords, the ones that take, like, no fatigue whatsoever. They're like two. Or the rapier. Weapons like that are pretty excellent in this fight. Interesting that they're not bringing me directly to its mouth. Maybe it's just too crowded. But don't forget, guys, I think we've already lost Muldoon. Hmm. Would love to throw some, uh, some acid on him again. Yeah, it kills all three of them at once, even. See how much damage this does. Not, not terrible. But you need a hell of a lot of shots to do that. And archers have notoriously low melee attack, so melee skill, so they're they're really bad in this fight. So there's there's so many things to consider. And guys, just like that, we're gonna we're gonna pop out of this. 
No point in wasting any more of my your time for sure. That was a that was a run going bad. And I think we'll leave it here. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I know that wasn't perhaps the most entertaining or uplifting or epic of battles, but never fear. The next time we we play some Battle Brothers, we're gonna beat the Kraken. Uh, that's what it's all about. Take this episode as a bit of a uh, learning experience for both me and you, and just what you have to expect whenever you face them. It's it's repetition, trying to get lucky. There's RNG elements to this. There's obviously skill, but not as much as, as you'll find in many of the other battles in this game. Uh, but I hope you still enjoyed the episode, and yeah, wish me luck next time, guys, because it's going to be a stressful long uh, series of battles for me, and I'm going to have to make a lot of free time IRL, as the kids say, to, uh, to make sure that I bring you guys a Kraken victory. So thank you so much for watching. Once again, my name is Brett, and as always, guys, I will see you in the next one. Take care, y'all.